Welcome to the English Show Reviews and Discussions Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and joining me today is Silver Quill. Hey, do you want to read my fanfic? <laughs> um, not sure, M- maybe? It's all about this hippogriff who becomes king of the world, and every mare loves him. Uh, sounds fun? Question mark? It is the praise that you've ever heard, now praise it! <laughs> praise it! Sure, <geez. laughs> also joining us today is Totera. I think Silver might be lying. We have to put the truth talisman on him to see if he's actually telling the truth or not. You know, if he bites into his own lie, does it count as a lie? Uh, well, then, I'd, then I'd be a narcissist. <laughs> <laughs> but anywho, in today's episode, we are going to review Season 9, Episode 21, Daring Doubt. In this episode, when another author released his own version of the events in A. K. Erling's Daring Do book, Rainbow Dash, is furious, while Fluttershy is curious to know the truth. So, this is a lot of fun. First impressions are in order, or, yeah, first impressions, yes. Uh, Silver, what do you think? Uh, I remember looking back at this one and just not enjoying it as much as others. Hmm. Uh, it does star Fluttershy, and it shows her doing what she does best, affecting a change on an individual level. But at the same time, it's one of those very uh, quick switcheroos on uh, on villainous characters. It's like, oh, really? You're you're just misunderstood. Well, all those murder attempts are totally off the hook. Then, what's up? No, I mean, it sounds legit. No, yes. I'm gonna go with no. <laughs> anyway, also, Tara, what do you think? Uh, I'm kind of meh on this too, actually, because. Like Silver said, it's, it's it's not really a shocking twist, but it's like, oh, you know, I did this because I was trying to do this. It's like, really? Should we look back at the previous uh, episodes on what you tried to do? <laughs> well, and true, 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 true. And as for me, you know what? I, I'm going to be the odd duck out, and I, I like it. <laughs> I just like how it subverts expectations. It... Shows that hey, Fluttershy is overpowered, <laughs> and look at her. She she's doing stuff that affects ponies or creatures or whatever it is, and I I think we can go at it when we get into the review. But anywho, uh, if you have not watched this episode, pause here and go do so. Welcome back. So anyway, we start off the adventure with. Fluttershy going to Rainbow Dash's house, returning a daring do book that she borrowed, and telling Rainbow Dash about a new book that just came out. Uh, said book was called what was it again? Uh, daring do is a big poopy head. <laughs> uh, hmm, not really, but it's uh, daring do and the fallen idol. So Rainbow Dash is a massive fan. Also, she has. Favoritism by Daring or a key Erling that sends her a copy once it's done and out. So, Rainbow Dash is shocked by this revelation and reads the book, you know, quick read it. And she is not happy with the story. And there's a segment of the book where her secret identity is revealed. She questions who is the author and is George R. R. Martin. Yep, he's got the beard to prove it. Yep. And I'm gonna pause here. So, guys, what did you think, uh, Silva? Well, okay, there's one reason why uh, <coughs> this new guy can't be George R. R. Martin. He actually published a book, but he's steady. <laughs> uh, that's true, that's true. <laughs> I mean, no, I'm not bitter. Why do you ask? <laughs> but, well, mostly... It's kind of interesting that Fluttershy is getting involved in this so late in the game. She's been a part of a Daring Do adventure herself. Two, if you count the comics, but oh, there's a continuity hiccup for you. So mostly what we get here is a setup and just sort of, okay, this is what we're doing. This is the conflict. Rather swift. But hey, at least uh, AK Yearling isn't hanging it up like last time. Mm-hmm. True, 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 true. And Terra? I do like how Fluttershy is so into the book that even while Rainbow Dash talking, she's like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm really into this book. And it's 
kind of the same as always, like we saw in a previous episode with Sonambula, how Daring Dude is misunderstood, and they're like, who's doing all this? And we gotta go find out who this person is that's making fun of her. Yeah, it feels like they're retreading, quote-unquote, same story threads. But, and if you uh, call last time something like this happened, you already know who's behind all of it. Yeah, true. true. I mean, it's obvious, come on. But anywho, yeah. uh, let's carry on. So, Rainbow Dash... Uh, decides to warn AK about Sid book and what it's going to do and she sets off to a location where a bookstore is she and Fluttershy so once they're there it's a bit too late because they have ravenous fanboys or fangirls uh, asking AK about the book is it true or not and does she kick puppies and so on and yeah, let's just say that this is annoying. And AK just shoots everybody out. And Rainbow Dash and Fluttershy talk to AK about the book and what's going on. So AK doesn't know who's writing it and just sees the name George R. 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 Martin. And Fluttershy just points out, why don't we go ask him? He's right across the street doing a book signing. <laughs> and yay, let's go and meet this guy once they go into sit bookstore uh, we get to see who is the author and it's none other than uh, professor or dr cavaleron in disguise as george rr R. martin what a shock eh? <laughs> i know uh, rainbow dash just confronts him while rainbow dash just wants an autograph <laughs> and wait what wait wait, wait what? sorry uh what i mean it's not shy Sorry. So, long story short, Rainbow Dash Too late. <laughs> Rainbow Dash confronts uh, Caballeron. Caballeron says, "I don't know what you mean." And Fluttershy just wants to know why. What's going on here? So Caballeron tells his side of the story, and saying that he is a victim to AK or Daring Do. Daring Do always steals from him. Uh, he doesn't have enough time to take care or have enough money to take care of the library and so on and Fluttershy says you know uh, why not I help you in your current situation and with that Fluttershy joins Cabrilleron and they head to the well forest jungle whatever it is to retrieve a fallen idol or a Something, something. I, I don't know. I don't remember. In the necklace, something like that. Uh, I think it's like the truth talisman. Yes. Uh, Rainbow Dash goes to AK to warn or to tell her what's going on. And with that, she transforms into Daring Do in front of a child who is at all. So I'm going to pause here. Uh, Tara, what do you think? Well, I can see what they're going with this episode. It's like, you know, there's two different sides of the story. It's like, say, you know, there's some drama going on or some friends in an argument. It's like, hey, let's hear both sides of the story. And for a while, it does make sense. Like, uh, when Fluttershy mentions about Dang Dude destroys a lot of spire webs, you know, the poor things because she cares about animals. But then Rainbow Dash, you know, because he's on Daring Do side, he's like, yeah, she does that to save the artifacts. And I'm like, well, I mean, she does just randomly destroy spider webs. <laughs> but then later on, when Caballeron's talking about how they used to have a museum and stuff like that, it's like, yeah, he's just doing this because Fluttershy is so gullible and stuff like that. And you kind of know where this is going. All right, true, true. And Silva? Well, first off, can I just say that the the little filly who sees Daring Do transformation, that's adorable. <laughs> I know. Uh, now, the accusation that Daring Do kicks puppies, and she says it was that one time accidentally. <laughs> what happened? Yeah, I'm curious where, when that happened. Maybe what she, did you do? Maybe she was running away from Caballeron and his goon, and there was a puppy crossing the street, and she didn't notice because she was looking behind... Well, who, who knows? But I just was sort of waiting for someone to say, oh, yeah, about uh, about your side of the story. So what was the terrible misunderstanding when you tied Rainbow Dash to a pillar and drowned her in slime? She asked for it. 
Oh, she might be into that. Who knows? Uh, true. All right, well, I mean, we've already saw the miraculous ladybug when that happened. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Tara, you, you just opened up a can of worms. Hey. You're sick. You're sick. You, you, you made me watch that, and now it's imprinted in my head forever. Yep, and it was your first watch, too. <laughs> yes, that was my very first episode. Much fun. Much fun. Anyway, carry on, Silva. You sickened me with your insanity. <laughs> but anyway, I, I will say we all think that, oh, Fluttershy is about to have a harsh truth in trusting too easily. But, well, this is Fluttershy we're talking about. She's been, I don't think anything Cabalan can do, Discord has done worse <laughs> and will do worse. So true. So I'm guessing this then? For now. All right. So let's hit into the jungle where we see Cabalaron trying to head to the uh, temple of Tenochtitlan. Yes, bless you. So, anywho, uh, as they trek through the jungle, we see that uh, Cabalaron and his goons are trying to play it smart, playing to tra trying to play it safe where. Uh, they're trying to get on Fluttershy's good side. Usually, when an idiot uh, almost eats a poisonous fruit, Cabalaron will scold him, but instead of shouting, he's being very nice. Said Goon says he's hungry, and Fluttershy unpacks some juice boxes and fruits. And Cabalaron is confused. You're willing to share this with us? And Fluttershy says, yes, have you not been on an adventure before? Is this your first time? Noob. And before they could enjoy the snacks, some wildcats appears. And let's just see. Is, Pokemon? Is that a Pokemon reference, Norman? Wait, what? <laughs> Not really, but yeah. You said let's... some wildcats appeared. <laughs> Not really, but yay. <laughs> but anywho, wildcats appear and they run. Satishai just says, Guys, uh, have you tried talking to them? And I'm here just thinking, wow, Fluttershy, you're the only person that can do that. Literally, the only person that couldn't do that. Uh, but anywho, the rest of the guys think Fluttershy is dead meat, but once they see that Fluttershy tamed the beast, they just say that, oh, it's all a misunderstanding. They didn't mean to uh, romp through their territory and whatnot. And... Fluttershy gives belly rubs to a lynx. So, yay. <coughs> While this is happening, Flut Rainbow Dash and the Ringdo are flying through the forest. And Rainbow Dash just says, why didn't you get the talisman in the first place and whatnot? And the Ringdo just says, it's a bit difficult because I don't have a map. And the traps are very dangerous. Oh no, this is bad. So, the next scene, we get to see Cabaleron trying to get to the top of the monument while his second command says yo boss why don't we take a shortcut and Cabalaron just says shut up you idiot nobody wants to listen to your plans and second command is a bit down but Fluttershy says don't worry yo I'm sure he'll listen to you one day keep it up so I'm just gonna skip through here because it's a bit repetitive um, henchmen do stupid things Fluttershy is the one that saved them and once they manage to open the door, they slip through. Uh, in the bottom of the temple, we see Rainbow Dash and Daring Do trying to go up, but they are being tied up by Arizoto. And they escape. Mm, yes. Yes. It's not It's not a Daring Do not story until she gets tied up or captured at least once. Uh, true that, true that. <laughs> I think I think she's a sub. Oh no. <laughs> okay. But anywho, uh are we still doing the ring sorry tearing the ring doing the wood dash escapes and goes through the opening at the top. So I'm gonna pause here. So, uh Silver, what do you think? Well I mean in some ways this is showing Fluttershy at her best. She can uh she can tame any beast. She can encourage others. I mean, she's basically winning over a Cavalaron's men and, sorry, stallions, and he doesn't even realize it, which says something right then and there. 
But at the same time, you're just like, wow, why did Darren do bother befriending Rainbow Dash when Fluttershy is the greatest gift to adventuring ever? I guess it is funny, but I don't think there's been a Daring Do story where she hasn't been captured and bound, and Rainbow Dash is now a part of that, so, you know. In the comic, did it happen? In the comic, uh, that one might be the exception, but the comics have always been their own thing. True. I'm just wondering, like, did Rainbow, sorry, did Daring Do got tied up there, so, you know. <laughs> well, who can say? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Anywho, is that also? Yeah, I think we'll we'll get to the, the the really big redemption shortly. But there's Aoi Zodal. <laughs> yeah, true. Guard, guardian of ten foot pylon. <laughs> uh, true, 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 true. Anywho, Terra, what about you? For me, there's not really much to say because I know I've seen this in a couple of um, TV shows where the bad guys try to trick one of the good guys, but then the good guys are so nice to them, so they start having a change of heart, thinking, huh, maybe this ain't so bad after all. And then, at first, when Daring Drew's talking about the um, the artifact, here I am thinking, why didn't you just get it yourself before doing all this? And then she explains it, and then she's like, oh yeah, the traps are so dangerous, and I'm just thinking... But don't you live for that? Don't you like going through all the traps? You go through so much traps, and yet now this one all of a sudden makes you worried? Confidence shaken after Cinebula? Or everyone has a... We all enjoy roller coasters. Well, some of us enjoy roller coasters. Mm -hmm. I, I don't. But, <laughs> we, but even the bravest roller coaster rider would look at, say, a really badly designed one and be like, no, that's too unsafe. <laughs> true that's that true. Too. True that too. And I guess the only thing I can say left is poor Dang Do always being tied up. <laughs> oh, no comment on that one. Anywho, uh, we continue on the story with Cavaleron going through the temple and discovering the location of the uh, cl cl clanging. Oh wow, uh, truth talisman. Yes, discovering the truth talisman and. He's being, oh, it was me. I knew the talisman could not be reached by our magic, but I never knew it would be hung in a very high place. Oh, if only we had wings. Oh, oh it was me. So the just says, I have wings. I could get it. I'm going to get it. And once getting the talisman, she activates the trap card. Ah, floor turns into lava or lava explodes. The floor is lava. Oh, no. And with that, uh, everybody got into a panic. But the henchman says like, Yo, I have a plan, help me. And we shall destroy this monument. And once monument is destroyed, they create a bridge to save Fluttershy. Once they cross it, uh, Cabalaron got the necklace. And ha ha! He, this, he, <laughs> he tells the truth about the whole situation. Like using Fluttershy to his own needs, but discovering that her kindness uh, changed their hearts and whatnot. And in the, in the back of my mind, like she tamed Discord. You guys are nothing to her. Yeah, but and yet she is now a waifu to all of them. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but they have strong competition from God of Chaos. But anywho. Before they could finish fighting, our Risotto comes into the fray and activates Trap Golems. Said Golem are made of rock and they are robotic. They cannot be reasoned with. So while everybody's trying to run for their lives, the Ring Do just responds by saying, okay, there's a way to stop these Golems and that's with uh, bright light. And Daring do just ask Awizo, sorry, um, Dr. Caballero if he has the diamond. And he says he has, and Daring just says, uh, hold it up high, and she flashes a flashlight on it, causing a solar flare. And all the golems are turned back to stone. And you know what? I think I can finish this in a few bits. Yeah, I'm going to finish it until before we reach the epilogue. Yeah, you can pretty much finish it. All right. So anyway, uh, with that, uh, everybody works together, having a truce, and push out the door. They discover 
a result is waiting for them and he is trying to grab the talisman let's just say there's a game of hot potato and they run into a dead end so our risotto is covering said dead end and just slamming the pillar or whatever it is so the shy just says you know what i got a plan give the talisman to me she goes out talks to our risotto and our risotto explains that these two jokers here have been stealing all the artifact that i was charged to guard and because of them my job is on the line so i need to make sure that they don't do this and stuff like they're really big jerks daring and dr cavalieron just go out and daring explains her, just her situation saying that she's been doing this just because she wants to keep those artifacts in a safe place i.e a museum while cavalieron just wants to take it and sell it so i'm gonna pause here and tara what do you think well okay i do like how they decide the bad guys have a change of heart it's like yeah you know what we'll, we'll save fluttershy she's so nice to us and then you know the usual stuff the bad guys work together with the good guys because you know they're trapped together they have no choice but then the, the the thing that really bugs me and it's gonna bug me every time i watch this is when Aoizolo says i've been doing this protecting them and that and it's like okay so what what happened what about the one time where you tried to use those rings for the sun and make everything super hot Hmm. <laughs> uh, no comment. Exactly. See, how he, you can't really make a comment because he's been trying to, I guess, take over the world, if you put it that way, or do something bad, and they make then Daring Do's pretty much the hero. But now they make it seem like Daring Do's the bad person because Ari's all saying I've been trying to protect these, and Daring Do's like I thought I was protecting these and putting them in a museum. It's like, yeah, at first it sounded like it, but now with this, like... <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, man. It's okay. Use your words. I, I know. It's just, conf it's just stuff like that. It's confusing me, like, when, when they do stuff like this. All right, then. And Silver, what about you, man? Part of me is, wonders with how he's always like, I wasn't trying to burn the world. We're in the jungle. We need heat. Ever since you took those away, it's gone from... It's gone from sweltering to just ball me. <laughs> it's freezing. <laughs> Actually, I'm looking through the transcript of uh, way back in Daring Don't, uh, trying to remember what what did he do? Since the ring places 800 years of unrelenting sweltering heat, maybe that's just in the local area. <laughs> we all we all assumed it was to cover the world, <laughs> but maybe it's like. <laughs> Oh, this is part of the cycle. <laughs> Probably. Meanwhile, Rainbow, Rainbow Dash is looking at Daring like, are we the bad guys? <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember that one. But this is the show trying to tie up as many loose ends as possible. So all the villains and the secondary heroes are now coming to a mutual misunderstanding scenario. Mm. But if I could draw a strange analogy, who here remembers G Gundam? I remember. I kind of remember it. Yeah. Uh, uh, you feel Steens. No. Uh, the one of the supposed antagonists, Master Asia, this elderly man who cackled and roared and was so enjoying being a bad guy, he's just running around. Ah, ha, 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 I'm gonna destroy you all ah, ha, 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 until at the end, where that you learn that he was like, "Oh no, I'm so sad because the Earth is in pain, <laughs> and I'm doing all this for good reason." <laughs> and you're like, "No, you cackled like a madman over uh, the bodies or the remains of your friends' Gundams." Even he admitted, I've been acting like a perfect villain this whole time. Yes, because that's what you are. Or let's uh, let's also go with uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Abridged. Why are you laughing like a maniac, stealing cards, and trying to kill everyone? Does that sound like a hero to you? Well, when you put it that way, then what the hell, man? What the actual hell? <laughs> Who was it again? Who did that? Uh, oh, Paradox. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was the Abridged movie. That one I remember. Re that one you remember. Oh, the Tortella, but he did not remember. Oh, Kakabalos. This has been a while. 
<laughs> oh, Chotara, you need to watch my video as I take Yugi dick. <laughs> I think you just killed Norman. <laughs> oh no, if there's an attack, then we must do. <laughs> I must do the Norman Santo. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and I will activate the seal of all Kakamabos. Which is what that album of Zoto Ball <laughs> would do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and so you see, Dr. Katmabobamabaman, he's not so bad. Oh, boy. He's only been at this for about a couple dozen. That's not a word. Yeah, not like my oh, wow. thousands of years. It's under a thousand years as part of the, my plan <laughs> at the Oa Kakamabos. <laughs> uh, right, you know. But, 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 yeah, like, like you mentioned it before, Silver. This is trying to tie up or clean up loose ends. And I find that a bit annoying. Well, would you rather they just keep trying to tear up to tie up Daring Duke? <laughs> uh, no, 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 no comment. But anyway, uh, no, it's just one of those scenarios where if you take this episode on its own, yes, it makes a lot of sense. Awizoto is kind of the guardian and his job to take care of everything. But Daring Du and Cavaleron just mess things up they just steal and uh, make Awizoto's job hard until the part where you're reminded that he tried to put the sun or the whatever is into a perpetual heat that will burn or drought the land for 800 years something like that 800 that's not a word yes <laughs> Not 100,000 years. But the point is, like, if you don't remember that, Arizoto is kind of a victim here. But if you remember that, what? What's, what are you? Where are you? So, it's a contradiction in characteristics there. But overall, I still like it. I, I still like the concept, but I don't know. It's just tying up too much like it's just trying to clean everything up because this is the final season and whatnot although there's a there's an important uh, point of discussion there very big push i've seen among psychiatrists is to say do not define yourself by victim status because one you're giving away agency you're giving away uh basically your control over your own life but two then suddenly anything is justified when you think you're the victim Caballeron says this. Awazodal says this. You're like, guys, you, you tried to murder ponies. I really can't stress that enough. <laughs> you tried to murder. True, true. Anyway, I'm going to wrap this up. So, in the end, they promise not to steal and so on. And they decide to write a book about it. So, once at the bookstore, uh, A.K. Yearling and George R.R. R. Martin just sit there the rainbow dash and fluttershy was it i don't see fluttershy oh she's there okay so rainbow dash and fluttershy goes to the bookstore saying like wait what i thought you guys were going to be a hit and they just say that oh uh, there's a new author in town and it's Arizoto, and he's reading to the ponies and with that episode ends and everybody's happy yay well, except Daring Do and Caballeron, who just lost their revenue. <laughs> now they've now they've got to go back to stealing just so they can make ends meet, which will make Awizotl the laughing stock of the other unseen guardian creatures. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the cycle renews. <laughs> you, you know, Silver. There's a huge possibility where AK and RR Martin would probably do something else with tying up and stuff. Oh, well, Fifty Shades of Daring? Probably. Probably. I was actually expecting something else, though, at the end. <laughs> uh, but anywho, I'm just... Uh, would uh, you rather that they do you? No, I was just expecting that, you know, get one of those um, crazy fan ponies and one going, Caballero was better before he turned good. Oh, man. But anywho, uh, episode ends. So, Silver, what do you think? It's not offensively bad, but at the same time, it tries very hard to do away with a lot of character development, or at least what we've known about these characters for a long time. 
And I think that ultimately it hurts the episode more than helps it. Fluttershy is in peak form as she's the most innocent and you get a little swept up by her and her adorableness. And if you don't think that hat looks cute on her, then I'm sorry. I don't want to know you. <laughs> But at, the, but at the same time, it's trying very hard to just sort of explain away everything that these villains have done over the course of several episodes. I mean, the, the curiously named Daring Do arc has done a lot to show that these guys are awful people who resort to assault, kidnapping, and attempted murder to get what they want. Now suddenly they're just, just a little misunderstood. I mean, if you imagine the Joker trying to pull this stunt. Legal version. Even then. Even then. True, true. <clears throat> so I'm afraid it's asking too much of me in terms of accepting a character shift and a new dynamic. I need a little bit more. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so probably probably could have made this a two-parter. Uh, nah, not really. One part is Or a multi-parter. You meet Cavalier's poor sick mama. <laughs> uh, anywho, Tara, what about you? I mean, I'm also not saying I hate this episode, but it's decent. I mean, I do like the lesson they're going for. It's like, yeah, you know, you gotta listen to both sides, and maybe one person's misunderstood and stuff like that. You can't jump to conclusions, but it's like the whole thing with Ali Zoldo is like, you know, he tried taking over the world one time, and then he tried putting the whole world, I mean, at least he says it, the whole world in heat. And then all of a sudden he's like, yeah, I was just doing it to protect the artifacts. It's like, really? I highly doubt that. <laughs> yeah, I get what you mean there. I get what you mean. And personally for me, I like this episode. It's a lot of fun. If you take a look see at the point of view of Fluttershy, this episode is awesome. She single-handedly redeemed three, sorry, two, well, three, five, five, five. five quote-unquote villains in one swoop and that's not that's nothing to laugh at like she is overpowered here like we all know that she can stare a manticore down she could uh stare a dragon down she could tame the wireless of manticores and play with cerbus and this five here they're nothing so Fluttershy here is overpowered, which is fun to watch. And she does say the line, everybody deserves a little kindness, which is true. Uh, everybody does deserve a little bit of kindness. And beyond that, like you guys mentioned before, Arizoto and his previous action, those were confusing for me. Uh, Caballeron, I can see him turning a le new leaf after this because, well, Fluttershy got to them, so mm. and in the end I, I like how they wrap it up, but I'm not a big fan of the reason that they did it. Like, I, I believe that they could at least drag it out for a few more episodes before at least giving them a reason to quote-unquote retire. Uh, but those are my thoughts. Anywho, uh, Silver, what are you going to do for next week? Well, we're going to have the opposite of a, of a redemption. We are going to look at the end of Nightmare Nights, the fifth and final issue. Yay. It's been a while. And you know what? Since previously we did the fourth chapter, and I, I couldn't wait. I could not wait. And I just want to wrap this up in a nice tiny little bow because it is glorious. So anyway, next week we'll be doing Nightmare Nights issue 5 the final issue so keep <laughs> stay around for that one so anyway if you have any questions concerns or suggestions for the show you can contact us at mbsugmail.com you can also reach us on the twitters the show's twitter account is at mbs show and my personal twitter account is at sanzo silver where can the good people find you you can find me on deviantart and twitter under mlp silver quill you can find me on patreon and ko-fi under silver quill help support the channel Keep the videos rolling. And if you do a search for After the Fact or Silver Quill, I shall appear on YouTube. And on Wednesdays, if there's a new comic, you can find me on Equestria Daily. We're fast approaching the the uh, crossover with Transformers. Yay. Which will be every day in May. Well, not every day, but every Wednesday in May. Yay. So that'll be an 
active time. That'll be an active run. Woo! That's gonna be fun. Like, we gotta see Twilight and Optimus Prime doing stuff and talking about stuff. Yay! Oh, stuff, 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 So much stuff. Yay, that'll be fun. Anyway, uh, Terra, where can the good people find you? Well, the good people can find me on Facebook, DeviantArt, Twitter, or YouTube under the name Torterra1324. Or they could just do a Google search and I'll be on all platforms, including my Patreon page and my Ko-fi page. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Anyway, also please hit subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And also Stitcher Radio and also like our Facebook page. You can then also catch us on PornityLife.com. Links are in the show notes. If you would like to support the show, you can do so at Patreon.com. Slash the MBS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review discussion podcasts, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Uh, talking about <coughs> exclusive the show that you're listening now when it's been posted there is quite different from what you hear on the youtube slash itunes so it's worth checking it out there for the differences which do you agree silver yes definitely tara yes <laughs> awesomeness awesomeness and the thank yous yes i would like to thank lucky knight amy jeffrey Tristan and also myself like thank you so much guys you are great so anyway I have been Norman Sanzo I am Cecilia Quill and I am the Torterra and we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS show see ya read my fanfic no yes <laughs> talking about fanfics have you guys heard of sunny skies all day long Actually, I don't think I have. Ah. Me neither, but I wish it's something I had for weather-wise. <laughs> it is a very fun fanfic. You guys should read it. It's very fun. I don't know. That, that name implies something sinister. It's like, everyone has a lobotomy or something. No! No. No. <laughs>